What's happening, people? Um, I figured I better get back in this garage and continue to work on the bike here. Um, you can see behind, oh, if I don't kill myself. I got some uh, my cylinder bank here. I've sort of done some honing on the cylinders. Got to clean them out there. I got new rings uh, put on the pistons. I cleaned up the pistons and threw some new rings on them. So um, I got new snap rings and everything. So we're going to start with the engine assembly to get this thing back together. Um, there's some engine paint touch up that needs to be done, but I'm not going to worry about that until it's all back together. What we're really going to concentrate on is getting the pistons back onto the con rods, get the wrist pins in there, get some assembly lube on, put the snap rings back on, keep them in place. And, um, and then we're going to try to get the piston bank back on there. We'll see if I can pull it off without uh, going to get one of those piston ring compressors. I've got to clock these rings. They're just kind of on there right now. Um, the book spec shows you, um, and you can see in this image here, that there's a certain way that you need to clock those rings. So I'm gonna to try to get those things set up as close as possible before I put them on the con rods. They'll probably move a little bit, I'm not terribly worried about it. I'll check it again before I try to get the cylinder bank on. And then I envision some sort of a wrestling match where um, I'm trying to figure out how to get these things back into the pistons without a piston ring compressor. We'll see how it goes. Um, it, may be, it may mean that I need to pause and go and get more tools, but we'll see how it works out. Um, what else are we doing today? If we get that far and I can actually get this bank back on, I'll put the head back on, put the cylinder head back on. I got new shims so we can adjust the valves. I got the clearances recorded and everything. Um, so we'll put the shims in there. Um, we'll get the cams put back on, set the timing, and get the whole top button back up. That's the goal. I don't know if it'll be done today or if this is going to bleed into another day, maybe tomorrow, but we'll see. So we're going to jump right into it and, uh, and start putting the engine back together.
idea here is that for each of these pistons to make it easy on myself I'm gonna start with the middle and work out so this is piston I marked them this is piston number two has a little arrow on it to tell you which way is forward um, so I'm gonna get this connected get the snap ring in so this piston isn't in the way and then I'll come over here turn the crank get this one up put that one in. Same thing on the other side. I'll start in the middle, get this piston connected, and then work to the outside again. That way I'm just trying to leave myself as much room as possible while I'm in here trying to get it, uh, get everything reassembled.
All right, so you can see that uh, the cylinders or the pistons are installed on the connecting rods here. Um, and so I'm ready to try to slide the cylinder bank down on top of these pistons again. They're kind of floppy all over the place, as you can see right now. Nothing's holding them uh, stable, nothing's holding them in place. And so I'm gonna try to use this little diagram from the book. And what the book says is to basically take some um, take some wood blocks and I have a couple of scraps here 
and basically just create these spacers. Uh, and these kind of like hold up spacers. And what, what, what the intention is, is that you get those spacers in place um, and they'll sort of sit underneath these pistons like that and hold them in place while you try to slide the cylinder bank down on top of it. You crank this around and it'll give, uh, it'll give it something firm to sit on top of and they won't move. I don't have a, a, a piston ring compressor and so I'm going to try to do this with my fingers and see if I can finagle it. If not, I'll go to the auto parts store. They sell piston ring compressors or even like a, a decent sized hose clamp would do the trick since these pistons are so small. So, uh, so I'm going to do a little bit of woodworking. Just probably chop these up roughly with a, with a jigsaw. I'm not going to take too much time here. One of the idea is to keep the progress moving on the engine and not make some pretty wood thing. So here we go. We're going to give it a shot. So you can see here that I was able to get the cylinder bank on top of the cylinders without using uh, a ring compressor or 
um, a hose clamp. So that sort of worked out. The bottom of the cylinder banks were kind of fluted, so they kind of helped the rings go up in the cylinders. So I saw this egg carton trick uh, from another YouTuber a while back, I can't remember who it was, but it was just an easy way to keep all the valve tappets in, uh, in order so that they went back into the valves that they came out of. I didn't want to mix them up. I, I really don't know if that will make any difference, but out of an abundance of caution, I really wanted to put everything back where it came from. Uh, the first couple of them they went in, they were kind of sticky, and so I thought, hey, let's throw some assembly lube on these too, and that seemed to help out a lot. So I went ahead and applied a bunch of assembly lube to the valve springs there, um, and then also to the tappets themselves, and they slid in a lot easier. Um, and then later on, I put some on the face of the valves, or the face of the tappets, before I put the valve shims in there as a way to just both give it a little bit of lubrication and help the shims stick in place so they wouldn't fall out. So here you can see me starting to put the valve shims back in and I'm referencing my notes in my notebook which made it a lot easier. Um, so I ordered the shims and they came packaged in these little baggies so I took out uh, each individual size that I need and just placed it on the tappets according to the notes that I put in the notebook. Um, real simple job, just put everything in make sure they were in the right places. And you can see there my little chart of the old versus the new.
All right, so it was hard to get a clear close up um, of the little uh, view window there in terms of where I was actually setting the timing mark, but I essentially had to set for pistons one and four, had to set at the top dead center um, before I could move on to placing this exhaust cam in the right place. So I got that timing mark and the ignition set up, uh, turned it over a few times, got really Try to make sure it was really nice and closely marked up how it was supposed to be. Now I set the exhaust cam in. Um, I think it was number one. Was You'll see in that previous clip was pointing towards the front. Uh, I had to line that up. And then once I got that set to the correct place, I was able to put the, um, I guess these cam holders, whatever these are called, the little clamshells. I was able to put those babies in there and get them locked down so that the exhaust cam wouldn't move and that can move on to um, setting up the intake cam. Okay, so I had to set the exhaust cam according to the number one mark on the gear there. But you can see here I'm counting these link pins and I think uh, for the GS550 the one I'm working on here I think it was 20 or 21 link pins back I can't remember off the top of my head but I had to keep counting those link pins to make sure that from the number two mark on the exhaust cam to the number three mark on the intake cam it was uh, 20 or 21 pins whatever it turned out to be if you pause the video you could probably count those for yourself um, and see where those marks lined up. But that's how the book specified to set up the timing for the intake cam. So once I got the cam chain tensioner set in there, you can see I tapped on it a little bit to see if I get the spring to pop out. Um, but what I ended up doing was just turning the kickstarter, you can see the motor rocking a little bit, turn the kickstarter and the, the chain sort of snapped in place and then uh, the tension was set on it. And so I went ahead and tightened up the jam nut um, and the lock screw or the lock screw and then the jam nut and it was all set to go. So there it is, that's the that's the finished product. I think it looks pretty good. Um, like I said, there's some touch up work to be done on some of the areas for the paint. I'll go ahead and do that. Um, it's really handy to have it on that motor mount where I can swing it upside down and everything. But um, So there's the finished product. I'm happy with how it turned out. If you like this video, go ahead and hit the like button. Uh, make sure you subscribe so you can stay up to date on future videos that come out. 
And thanks for watching and we'll see y'all on the next one.